congratulations on this brand new single. It's been doing so well on our show so far. People have been absolutely loving it. So congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. Cheers. That's awesome. <laughs> So Samuel, I guess I'll <laughs> I guess I'll start with you, Sam. Um, tell us a little bit about how this band came together because you're all very busy guys and you've all got other projects as well. It's um oh, well, it was the brainchild of of um, Alex from Sleep Makes Waves, and he he had a couple of riffs in his in his head that like he's come from that post metal background, all instrumental, but in his heart of hearts, he always had the evilness of death metal and that love of stuff like Morbid Angel and Opeth swimming around in his head. So it was, a, I guess he took the chance to be able to record it and he, he uh, bumped into Alistair and, and those guys had worked together in tandem um, to do an EP. And then they'd uh, sent me a couple of demos and see if I was interested. So I really liked the groove and the potential of that heavy sort of music that was coming through from them. And um, I just wanted to make it uh, some anthems and very catchy in, in the way that it came out because that, that genre can sometimes get a little bit too technical for its own good. Yep. And you need to be able to keep people's feet moving. And Alistair, I'm not sure if you're there at the moment. If you're not, we'll skip you. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were first approached about being part of this new project. Well, it was it was a super super strange feeling for me because I'm a bit younger than the other guys, um, and I actually kind of got introduced to the fold because I'm a really really big Sleep Max Waves fan. That's that's kind of how I met everybody. Um, well, met Alex by everybody is what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I've been a bit of a, a merch desk punisher for a few years, um, just sort of hanging out after Joe's and getting to know them and all that sort of thing. Um, and Alex was, you know, he'd always been kind enough to humour me over the, you know, as I, as I was growing up, sweating their stuff. And I also got into low that way as well, like just sort of going to shows, so just being like a bit of a keen bean, which was really great. Um, and then, yeah, sort of after a few years, Al and I actually began to catch up over beers and chat about bands and stuff and and yeah, he, he knew I was a drummer and eventually like he'd seen me play a few times and he was like, man, like I'm, I'm really keen to, to do this death metal thing. And you know, if you've got the time, then I think it'd be a fun thing to do. So that's kind of how we got started in that regard, which is really cool. And then, yeah, I just reached out to Sam because I'd seen, like I said earlier, I'd seen Lo live quite a few times and thought Sam had that great kind of <laughs> that CJ McMahon sort of scream going on with, with, with just crazy stage semantics and contortion -y things and I was like, you know, I'll just reach out cold and, and see how it goes. So it was a, it was a very good lesson for me of like just always go up and say hello to people at shows, always reach out and say hi to someone and yeah, you sort of never know what, what things can kind of line up. So it was a really, really cool vibe. So yeah, that's basically sort of how I how I came into the fold. Definitely. And Sam, this track that we've been listening to, it's from a very, very deep place and it's about a topic that made a lot of people in this country very, very angry. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a little bit about what inspired this track, especially lyrically. Are you talking about... Um... Which which single are we talking about here? Uh, I think we're talking Fabulous about we're, talk, we're talking about Fabulous Colonists. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, it's um. Well, a fabulist is someone that creates a, a farcical tale, or or there there are people that lie basically for a living, and that can be taken in a lot of sort of context to our current government, and it's just that it, it breeds apathy, and it's the more that you allow these lies to keep being uh, washed over you. It means that you're you're not you're not setting yourself up to be able to have a, a genuine response to things anymore, and you, you start to lose your, your compassion to, for things. And when it came to our bushfires, um, it was an overwhelming response of loss. But it was it's a mistake of our own doing. We've allowed these people to railroad us into decisions for the short term rather than long than the long term and our environment has suffered for that yeah so it's not a it's not a climate change it's not a climate creeping up on you it's a climate emergency 
and we need to be able to act on it. We've already lost our reef and our entire east coast is just scorched to nothing. Like it will take years and years and years for it to even be able to regrow and it might not even happen because we've probably sold it off for some more development plans and McMansions. So it's something that's really, really damaging for a country that tries to push its natural wonders as a tourist destination when we have none left. Was it a difficult topic for you to to sit down and, and get the lyrics to come out for, or was it something that you were so passionate about that it was very easy to write about? It's extremely easy to write about, and I wish it wasn't. I wish I had to search my, you know, my catalogs of things in my head uh, of things to come up with that makes things sound more monstrous and horrific to go with the music. But uh, sadly, the reality is when we look out the window, we've seen enough horrors as it is. So it's quite easy to be able to craft that into into a, an anthem for people to feel something about and, and walk away with an impression. Yeah. Now, Alistair, we can answer the question that a lot of our listeners have been asking. Is this track something part of something bigger? And yes, there's an EP coming. Tell us a little bit about the EP and is this track that we're talking about right now, is that the, a track that's a good example of what people can expect to hear on the EP? Yeah, I, th- I think in terms of the the way of s- the, the way of like the songwriting and trying to just do the do the fundamentals really well of good catchy riffs, having that sense of atmosphere and anthemicness, not um you know not just ripping it at two forty BPM for the sake of ripping it at two forty BPM, but actually trying to have a sense of songcraft. Um, about it, which which a lot of metal bands do, and 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 all the really 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 successful metal bands, that seems to be a massive part of what they do. Like you know, Lamb of God have catchy songs, for lack of a better word, they have hooks. So I think we're always going to like going to be aiming to to write stuff that can be as catchy as as extreme metal possibly can. Yeah. I think the big thing for for all three of us is to see it have that sense of um broader atmosphere and um you know like not ambience for the sake of being creepy and all like black metal man walks through the woods but you know more like um but yeah that kind of big stadiumy festival sort of vibe yeah uh, that's that's very much at the forefront um particularly as like al and i kind of lay down the riffs and stuff so yeah i, I think these two singles are a really good example of of what's going to be coming on on that ep absolutely and Alistair, was there any? Did you guys have any problems recording this because of the lockdowns and the quarantine and stuff like that? Did that make things difficult? Yeah, it did. It, it was a little bit tricky. It was um like because we're working, you know, across state borders and stuff at the moment. Like Sam's in Melbourne, Alex and I are in Sydney. You know, we we just had different lockdowns happen at different times in each of our respective cities. So that was <laughs> it. Just meant like you know we might finish some stuff and then Sam wouldn't be able to go to the studio and lay down the vocals or vice versa. So, yeah, but in terms of actually putting all the songs together up here in Sydney, like Alex and I got very lucky um, with the instru- with, with the instrumentals. Just we, we were able to basically finish these tunes just before lockdown hit, and now that you know lockdown is kind of lifting again we're able to really knuckle down and get this um this ep done so basically i feel like covid has been a really good acid test of how to be a band via distance because yeah. you know you throw all these uncomplicated factors in there um but yeah it's good we're sort of we're, we're trying to streamline the process because as well like alex has got sleep max wave sam's got low and hate or more like <laughs> there's there, there's a lot of balls that we're sort of always juggling to sort of make natural roll but it's a it's a it's a good process of you know just trying to be organized and try and like put the music first and foremost awesome and sam what's the plans now for the band what are you looking to do in the future will you be looking to get out there and do some shows now that things are opening back up as well for sure like uh, um i think the most important focus is having the ep under our belts and something that we're proud of and then i've already been hit up for for shows and supports like uh, with a lot of bands that are already formulating their, their gig cycle for 222 but um i just want to hold off till we've got the ep ready to roll so then we've got people to uh, attention really and they know what they're they're going to be hit with when they come see us live. 
I'm, I'm really excited to play again. So uh, I know that they're going to, I know that the, the, the feeling is going to be there for people to want to bang their heads and turn up. Like as long as they feel that groove, that's the whole point of being up there. Definitely. Well, we're going to play Fabulous Colonists right on our show again right now. So, first of all, with you, Alistair, what would you like to say to everybody out there before they take a listen to this amazing track once again? (laughs) I think he's finally made giving a coffee for someone. Definitely, yeah. (laughs) All right. So, Sam, what would you like to say to everybody out there? Uh, Look, I I, I really hope you, um, you don't lose your anger in the things that matter. And I know that metal is a great way of releasing that negative energy. So raise your fists, raise your horns, and enjoy Fabulous Colonists. We'll see you in 222 live. Awesome. And I think we've got Alistair back now. Mate, what would you like to say? (laughs) Sorry about that. I I literally had the the first customer come right at that moment. (laughs) Apologies. Um, Yeah, basically, I'd echo what Sam said. Basically, um, you know, if, if you really like what what um, you're hearing, like tell one of your friends about it. You know, the more people we have uh, following the band, the more we can make more music. So, you know, get out there, support support local bands, and and um, yeah, just in, sit back and enjoy the riffs, essentially. 